edition of Coding with Eman Code, so that's the name of the channel. Um, for today's edition, we're going to be talking about um, data basing within Docker. So for the application that we build, as I said in my first video, we're going to be building an, um, a kind of like a Flask application. And so we'll be using um, a, an SQL database. Now, the options for databases, for example, we can set up a different, a different machine that will have the database running under, or we can also, which is what we're going to do today, have um, a Docker container, which will actually have the, the um, database running within that container. So in this video, we're going to do a couple of things. First, we're going to install Docker. Then we're going to um, run a Docker container, um, which will essentially have the database running on it. And then we're going to have, just have a go at creating um, some um, tables and databases just so that we have an idea of what um, it would look like. So this is just to a foundation. So it's, it's literally to layer up what we will actually be doing, what we'll be running in the, in the official um, project. Right, um, so what I'm gonna do is I wanna share my screen. Right, so let me make this. It always seems to be quite small whenever I, I go to, um, I go there, so I'm clearing this because um, I'm on a new Ubuntu um, server. And so um, when you actually open it, it's good to run updates on it and upgrades. So once that's done, then you need to clear it. So um, the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to DigitalOcean and just go through how we're gonna install um, Docker. So if you're running this for the first time, if you're on an Ubuntu server, for example, then you can go to DigitalOcean. If you're on Mac or you're on Windows, you can also go um, Google literally how to um, download or how to install Docker on your machine and it will show you so the first thing you just want to follow these instructions, very simple instructions there. So first one you want to, I've already done that, which is the updating one. So you can copy um, this, and as you can see, it installs prerequisite packages, which lets um, APT use packages over um, HTTPS. Um, it's um, a safety um, protocol to follow. So you can paste that in there, and that runs you press yes for, um, um, and we'll also do this here. Um, and this will um, add the GPG key for the official Docker repository to your system. Um, in my other video, we covered repositories, um, we covered GitHub and things like that. Um, often when, um, for example, um, with Docker, once there's been an upgrade or an update, they can often push it to their um, repositories when you can download it from there, or they can also push it to a Docker hub and you can also go in download images from there also. Um, and then the next one, we want to add the Docker repository to our APT sources. Um, don't worry too much about what these terms mean and a moment we'll cover those in detail when we come to the very bulk of the big project. And then um, you want to do an update, it's up to you if you want to do that. Um, so we want to make sure that we're installing Docker of repo, repo instead of the default Ubuntu repo. Um, the default Ubuntu repo is essentially we're on an Ubuntu server right now. And so um, what often what could happen is that um, it would have local um, local Docker images on there that may, it may not be beneficial to us at this moment in time. Um, once it's done, we wanna make sure we install from Docker repository instead of the Ubuntu repo, which is what we've done here. Then we'll go ahead and finally install Docker, which is where this is why it's really important here we complete this step. So we paste that in there. We give it a yes. Sometimes it can take a while to um, literally run these updates, um, um, run these installations, just because it's literally it's like, it's as if you're downloading something from the software. On the terminal, it all looks very kind of quick, but it's run about the same process as when if you were on your system, on your Mac, Windows, or wherever you're using, you, you go to a website and you try to download something. Um, once we've done that, we wanna, uh, we can check that it works by using a system CTO status Docker, it should just say that it's active really, um, as you can see here, um, yeah. So we can see here it's active and it's running. And then um, the next step is quite important. We wanna add Docker to the user so that we don't have to um, use, we don't have to be a super user. So I first talked about it in my first Docker video. Um, however, if we were to, if we were, for example, did, um, Let's just, um, as part of um, the authorized um, users. We haven't set Docker as part of the authorized users and we do that. 
with this command here, which is um, so sudo user mode um, dash a uh, capital G Docker and then the user um, this is an environment variable. So it will echo that into that. Um, we will we will talk more about environment variables when we go onto the bulk of the project. So that's done quite quickly. And then what we want to do is we want to reboot the entire um, the entire um, server so that it will recognize these new fundamental changes. Right. So um, now that we've installed our Docker, we can test that we don't. Um, Docker is now part of the user um, by doing like a PS, and it will tell you right here and there that right now um, we don't need sudo to activate such Docker commands. So some of the Docker commands that we can use is um, Docker volume, for example, and that will list all the volumes um, in place. Also, oops, spelled um, Docker wrong. So uh, right now we have nothing in place. Now what we're going to talk about is that in order for us to actually use the Docker um, in terms of using it for the database, we first need to create a network, and we also need to first also create a volume. Um, th this will literally all fit in together when we, when it comes to putting the command together. So first, we'll do is create a volume, which we'll call it Docker Volume Create. We'll call the volume um, Social, for example. Now, just so uh, um, sorry, social. Wrong. Now, just so I, 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 you understand what a volume is, a volume is literally another term for database. I mean, that makes sense. Um, within Docker, if, for example, you had a database and you wanted to, you wanted to mount it onto a container, then you'd mount to use it um, kind of like a mounting point. Um, and then you'd, you'd literally use the volume within your Docker Compose file. We'll go into that much, much later on when we talk more about DevOps. Um, but here, we'll, so we'll create the um, volume here first, Docker volume, create vo social volume. And then we'll also need to create it can, be, it can be any name you like. Um, obviously, I've called my social. You can you can create, you can have your volume any, any name you like, but you need to remember what name you're using. And then we also need to create the network. Um, so Docker network create. Um, just to keep things simple, I'm going to call it social again, just to keep things um, simple. And then that will tell you here that it's been activated. So this is the unique name um, that it gives you. So if, if we did, for example, Docker network, let's list all the um all the networks that we have at the moment um we have some local ones that's on the bridge we also have um the social one here in terms of what the bridge means we'll cover that into, into much more detail for now just know that we've created the docker volume um we've created a docker network um we can also see the volumes and make sure it's also there um as we can see we've got a local um volume here with the database now we're going to now create a container which will house our database. And the, the command is quite long, so follow, bear with me here. I'm actually going to read it from uh, my other morning so just because it's, it's quite long. So the first part, I will explain as I go along. The first thing you want to do is docker run, um, because we're actually going to run this container. Um, the, um, you use actually when you want your container to run in the background, you don't want it to output exactly every, um, every output that's coming out of the container during the creation of the container. And then you also do the dash p for a port. Now my SQL runs on a port three three zero six, so you need to um, you need to tell it that for, for every um, request or every information coming from a, a port three three zero six over the internet, match it to uh, another, the other port three three zero six. And then here we reference our um, network. So you do dash dash network. And then you call it, you call, you, you bring in the name of the network, you call, which we remember, we were social uh, for myself. And then um, you want to do dash V, dash V social for volume, um, which is when you reference your um, volume, which us, it was social. Um, okay, what's going on here? There we go. Oh, my bad. Seems like. Um, we are having a bit of a glitch, it turns out. It's interesting, I've never really seen it before. Uh, let me come out of that, because it's gonna fail anyway. It's quite interesting, Some, and these things happen. Okay, cool, so, right. Let me play this so that we have, and you know, we can continue. So, um, yeah, I'll leave this bit in there. I think it's quite important that you see some of the things that can happen when you're essentially writing code it can often glitch sometimes. That's just 
doing quite well here. Um, let me recreate. Let me re um, create another terminal because I think this terminal is being a little bit difficult. <laughs> uh, let me just check things and make sure. Right, that's fine. So, um, like I said, I hope I copied it. I'm not sure if I did actually. Doesn't matter, we'll just do it again. So, docker run, docker run, um, remember dash d, dash p, um, call in the port, um, dash, dash network, um, call in the name of the network, which was social dash v, which is um, we've done calling the name of the volume that we created, which was also social, and then, um, this is where it's important. So once you reference the social name, you need a, 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 a colon, a colon, sorry, and then um, you need to reference where within the container the MySQL um, command is going to be. So it will be normally it's within the var um, directory, and then within the var directory, there's also a lib directory, and within there you will find your MySQL. Um, and then here, it's quite important you need to reference your environment variables. This is what Docker requires these um my SQL requires these things for example if you were to actually have a docker file you need to reference these things in there or if you had a docker compose you need to reference this so the first um environment variables that we're gonna um install we're gonna have is my SQL it has been applicable as root this is essential because we're creating a new database um essentially so we will need to have a password and then dash password equals and you can choose your password to be whatever you you want it to be just keep things simple. I'm gonna call it one, two, three, four. By the time this video goes up, um, I would have um terminated the server in this container, so um it doesn't is neither here or there. And of course, we also need another environment, another additional environment variable, which is what we'll call our database. So we need my my SQL. Um make sure it's spelled correctly because we don't want any errors, and then underscore database, and then we'll we can call it. I'm gonna call it um I'm gonna call it this database. I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna call it um, call it Emmanuel. Yeah, just keep it simple. Call it Emmanuel. And then finally, we, we, we name our container. It's quite important. You can name your container, especially when it comes to terminating your your container. It gives you normally when you create a container, it will it will produce its own kind of like long in long kind of gibberish name. Um, you can give you your, your a name you like. So we'll keep it my SQL. That way, if we want to terminate the container, we literally just need to give it MySQL. And of course, lastly, you need the image. So what we're going to do, we're going to call it MySQL and we're going to use a version 5.7. The reason why you need an image is because without, without an image, it's literally just a command, but it needs to run it in some type of server, um, which is the container. So if we press OK, it will now begin. So if, at first, if, then pay attention here because unable to find image MySQL 5.7 locally. What happens is that once you create, for example, a Docker file and you um, you build it, it will build it locally. It doesn't actually um, push it up. So if you were to reference it, it will, it will look for the image within your machine first. If it can't find it in there, then it will look to see whether you perhaps you may have pushed it to Docker Hub. And this, in this particular case, MySQL is not, we haven't built it locally. We don't have a Docker file for MySQL here, but the makers of MySQL can already push to Docker Hub. And so because it's not here locally, it, it can then pull it from the Docker Hub library. So we can check that this is running by doing .ps. And we can see that we have our container running. Uh, let me just make this slightly bigger. And as you can see, there's uh, the container, there's the image name, um, there's the name of our container. Now we need to actually go into this container and the way we do is called exec, so docker exec dash it. And then you need the container ID um which we we'll copy and paste and then we need bash so that it might be sh it might be bash depending on what your shell um what your shell is um once we're in there we will then um go into the um into the um sql so the command you need is my sql dash p p for the password and remember the password we set earlier on um was one two three four so we enter it one two three four and it doesn't actually show anything when you type it it's just part of the secret of it and then once you see all of this, welcome to my SQL monitor commands with um, typical, and then you know you're within your 
um, SQL um, version. So just to make sure that things are working, we can say, for example, that one of the commands in SQL is um, show um, databases. So it will show you what's already installed within your um, within your database. I created this earlier on. One thing about the volume is that it's really great in the sense that when you create a volume within um, um, Docker, even if um, you terminate a container and you start again, you will still have that information there. Um, remember, we created a database and we put it in manual also. So um, we can actually, I'll show you now, we can create a database, uh, another database, and we, we can call it, for example, um, we can call it custom. And you also need to end it with, um, with that. And then you press enter. It will tell you, okay, one row effect. So if you do show tables, um, it's a bit slow at the moment. Yeah, so, so database, sorry. We can see that, I um, indeed, we've got the, the one that we created early one within the command, and then we've got testing. So you can decide to use which one you want, um, which of the databases you want to use. Um, let's let's actually have a look at some of the databases that's actually on there. So we can do um, use let's call let's go into the MySQL one, see what's in there. I haven't actually looked in this. I'm not too sure what's in there. So let's have a look at what tables are actually already here. So we can see there's a few tables already in here. Um, we can see what's within these tables. We can do select star, which is select everything from. And you can call it the table. So we're going to call, we're going to look at DB, that table here, see what's in there. And there might be something in there. And of course, there is something in here. So you can see, um, yeah, there's a few information in here. Um, the good thing about my, my, my SQL is that it's relational databases. And so um, if there was appropriate primary keys and foreign keys, it will allow you to have a look at two tables together. It's quite important. Um, I think that type of MySQL. Um, that in-depth of knowledge. Um, I, I will, if you would like me to cover that, comment and just, um, comment below. And I'll see if I can I'll do a video, perhaps do a video on that. It's more important for data analyst. Um, that's where you know, relational databases are really important in terms of SQL, um, in, term, in terms of MySQL. And there's also functions that you can also write within MySQL. Um, um, and then once again, that's really important if you if you want to go into the data into the data analyst line or perhaps um, data scientist or data engineering. Um, for now, we're going to um, look at um, databases. And um, we're going to use the one I created just now, testing. So we use testing. And if we if we do show table, we will we'll see that there's no table created. What we can do is we can create a table. And we, the thing about um, SQL, you need a query. You need to give it a query, so it will have to be like a create, and then the name of the table, and then you need to list what the table is, um, the commands, for example, or the, the the type. So, for example, here we have host db user. So you need to specify all these. We, we, we're going to grab a simple one from um, W3 schools. Um, copy and paste that, and um, we just explain exactly what's happening here. So we'll create a table, the table is called persons. And these are the, the, I guess, the informational topics in there. So the person ID, the last name, first name, address, city, and things like that. Press enter, and now if you show tables, you can then see that it's in there. And we can do describe tables to tell us what the um, tables actually is about. Describe. Mm, that's interesting. There we go. Describe table. Describe um not table. Describe person. You need it's um a plot sensitive, so be careful with that. Um, and here we can see um the phone there. So if we were to um in um, we now know what it looks like. We've got a description of our table here. We now know what it looks like. We've got a description of our table here, and now we can go ahead. Um, let's. Exit and then, um, yeah, so then we can come out of our container. Now we're out of our container, our container is still running. But if we want to stop the container, we can do docker stop. I remember we named it so we can just do docker stop container by calling it. And if we look here, docker, 
like a PS, we can tell that phone indeed. Oh. And so yeah, that's um that's a tutorial on how we're gonna use um we, we're gonna use a Docker um PS dash A. Um it just tells you what previous containers you had up and then it gives you a bit more in-depth um, a bit more in-depth information about it. Sorry. So I hope you learned something from this tutorial. Um, it's a good thing you, you were able to see some of the glitches that happens often. Um, um, and these things are they are expected in software. Um, you will as you as you learn and code along, you will see more. Um, you will see perhaps things not exactly going to plan and it's about how you solve these issues. So um, yeah, follow along. All the videos I've released, you can find them in my channel. Um, it's best you probably watch all those videos or. Um, not to do long if you like, but what the point of all these videos is that we're going to be um, writing a we're going to be writing an application, and all the videos I made are all um, components uh, and tools that we'll be using um, to create it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, thank you very much for your time. Subscribe, like, um, subscribe, like, and um, put an alarm notification on for when more videos come out. Um, I